In this video, we will demonstrate how SIDLAB uses the quarter wave resonator element. Starting with the model building screen, we notice that there is an element called QW resonator. If we want to know a little more about that um, and the underlying theory behind it, we can actually go to the help menu and look for uh, the quarter wave resonator, which it brings up just uh, by reason that we have clicked on it. Uh, notice that there's an explanation here of all the underlying theory plus the equations uh, for that theory, uh, the underlying equations that SIDLAB uses to do its calculations of the performance of the resonator. So I encourage you to read through all this to get a little background uh, before you try to use the element. But for now, we will go back and make a simple model which will demonstrate how the element works. So we start by dragging and dropping that element into the screen. Now, if we take that element and just add a starting point and an ending point, we actually now have a complete model uh, after we put in the fundamental parameters uh, of that. So we have a simple model that will calculate just the performance of the transmission loss of a quarter wave resonator. Now it is asking us for length. Now that length is not the length of the main pipe, but is the length of the side branch. And for length we will put in 15 inches. It also asks for area, but area uh, is maybe not easy to calculate, so it's easier to just put in the diameter, which we will do one inch and let SIDLAB calculate the area for us. Same with the main pipe, we will put in a diameter of two inches and let SIDLAB calculate the air, main pipe area for us. Notice that it does not ask us for a length of the main pipe. Um, that really doesn't matter in this model and this sort of uh, element, quarter wave element, can be stuck in various parts of a much larger model. So now we go to the calculation screen and uh, we can calculate the transmission loss right away. Uh, notice first there are, there's not one peak in the transmission loss curve but two. Also notice that uh, the model ends at 1,000 hertz, but that is just because we have only calculated the frequency range to 1,000 hertz. Now suppose we want to see how valid the model will be at higher frequencies. We can calculate the whole model up to 10,000 hertz and see what happens. <clears throat> Now notice that um, the red line is at 8,000 hertz, uh, which is less than 10,000 to where we calculated. So that means that the SIDLAB model is very accurate up to the red line. In fact, that is the plane wave region uh, where SIDLAB is applied. So it, the model is very good below that. Um, now, rather than look at all these these um, peaks here, we're going to go back and just calculate the first few up to 2000 hertz. And we notice now the model is up, is clipped off at 2000 hertz, which is what we told it to do. Uh, and also notice there are four peaks here. Now why is that? <clears throat> that is because in quarter wave resonators, there is a fundamental peak. In this case, it's 220 hertz. But in addition to that, there are odd integer multiples of that frequency uh, where there are peaks uh, for a quarter wave resonator. So if this is 220, uh, this peak would be at three times 220 hertz. This would be at five times. And this would be at seven times, and so on. Um, so note also how peaky the behavior is and maybe we want to have a finer resolution on that so we can tell how uh, how sharp those peaks are. 
So we're changing the frequency range resolution step to 2 rather than 10 and calculate it again. <clears throat> uh, now suppose uh, you know, we have a real world problem and we can't tune exactly to the frequency that we want. Um, so how do we broaden out these peaks? Uh, well, you do that by adding maybe some resistance in the side branch, and SIDLAB has a capability for calculating that. If we go back to the main element again, um, we can add in the side branch uh, absorbing material. In this case, uh, we'll put in glass wool and we'll give it a flow resistivity of 200 rails per meter. Now we go back to the calculation screen and we hold the current graph so that we can compare it to the one we are calculating and we recalculate. And notice now the peaks have been drastically reduced but they have been widened. So we have maybe a, a more robust solution to our problem than uh, we had before. Um, so that is the end of this uh, video on the quarter wave resonator. Keep in mind that using quarter wave resonators gives you attenuation at a fundamental frequency plus the odd integer multiples of that frequency.